I'm I'm, I'm doing, doing it live, live dude. <laughs> doing it live. Welcome. Welcome. Well, well, dude, it's your show. show. You interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. This, this is, is the pre-show, pre-show before, before the show actually, actually goes live on LRN. Right. It's the pre-show pre-show for the Torchwood Report, which will be right. live on LRN in about six minutes. That's, That's LRN.FM, though, right? right? Right. LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network. The Liberty Radio. <laughs> Liberty Radio <laughs> Network. Right. I want to do a. I want to do a uh, news report, and I want to do it in the Daryl way. Those yeah, I things. love his. Yeah, you have uh, to like. You have 20, to go up at the end of everything you say. It has to have that. Twenty-three people were killed when a bus ran off a cliff, and everybody was sad. <laughs> right. right. That that my magic mud. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know the magic, magic mug. Tell me about. You've the never magic heard that commercial. You don't no. listen to LRN enough, then. I'm not a regular LRN because that is that terrible. is a that is a great commercial. My magic mud. So, so, by I the way, fell I... out of a tree and broke my back. My magic mud. <laughs> so I've, I've shared this here. Let me see if I'm. So in the pre-show part of the show, what we're doing is we're just getting ready and uh, wait, wait. We, we want to. Are we going to tell our studio audience at all, like, what we're going to be? Yeah, why? Well, sure, let's do it. You have it up in the – it's right up in the top in the tag. I'm, it's up in the I'm, top. I'm actually uh, posting to, to groups and stuff to build our audience, sir. Oh, my gosh. I have it on the wrong sir. thing. Right now I have it on the screen that's just me. There you go. Yeah. What are you doing here? I, I hogging, hogging the, quit hogging the spotlight. I know. I, yeah, I'm totally uh, – and, and now, now it's the both of us there. We're together. We used to do a show together. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was so much fun. That was. That was actually. Good old Disassociation Nation on the FPRN radio network. Yeah, yeah I, I remember how I got, I got in that show because I said, dude, I'm really thinking I want to get back into podcasting. And you're like, hey, have you ever thought about uh, what, what is originally you were thinking that I would just get my own show on FPRN, right? Right, right, right. I was trying to sell you some time right. on yeah. FPRN. Yeah. <clears throat> that didn't happen. And then it then turns out that, out that uh, you ended listen, up being a... Uh, you, you, you kind of busted my... Well, well I, I, I had done podcasts, podcasts but like a long time ago, like well, I guess now about seven, seven or eight years ago. And it, it, it had been like five or so years, whatever it had been. been. And, and so, so you, so you, I guess my cherry had grown shut. And you rebusted it, you right? Re-busted right. Rebusted right. my cherry, but I have to say, as a podcasting mentor, you immediately failed me. Like immediately. <laughs> Do you know how you immediately failed me? How did I fail you? Come on. Ah, I got a kind of microphone. What kind of microphone do you think? Giddy yitty. Giddy yitty. Got a yitty. No, I listen, at first, first, I didn't say that. Hey, first, Bodie, I told you what way, kind says, of microphone. Hey, Bodie says I have an echo, so I don't know if it's something on your end that can. I don't have. I did tell no, you that I hear an echo. Not. It's definitely not on my end, dude. It's not on your end. No, I only have, I don't have any audio from you going back out to, uh, to TeamSpeak. None. Yeah, yeah Bodie said it's probably because, because I'm capturing my mic twice somehow. And yeah. I I, th- I think that's probably it because I'm capturing the audio output capture, which means that's – well, actually, I wouldn't hear team speak, would I, right now? Um, I don't know. I would just listen. All you got to do, you hear the echo of my voice. It's a godlike voice. That's all, it, that's all you got to think about. It. Like, he's so awesome. It's an it's an echo. It's an echo. Oh my! Oh no no that's a yeti. Never mind. It's not an echo mic. It's a mm. yeti mic. Anybody out there in Studio Land ever use a yeti? I know when I first met Bodie, uh, Bodie was using a yeti. Darn near triggered me and. Cause hey, by then, getting ready to go live here. Oh, okay. I'm going to let you drive from this moment on because you you got this. We're silent as we get ready to go live.
Philippines and fell upon the nation this week after nearly 314 million Americans reported inexplicably losing consciousness for eight hours straight last night, with countless victims helplessly recovering from the fugue-like state with no memory whatsoever of the lost time. Researchers at Princeton University who have been studying the alarming phenomenon since its inception told reporters that though they were unable to ascertain the source of the sweeping condition, it appeared to be somehow linked to the setting of the sun. Right now we suspect that there may be some connection between these sudden blackouts and the vision that some Americans have reported experiencing while they were unconscious. Like most of these hallucinations, they're too abstract for us to draw any definite conclusions from. At this time, we urge people to never turn off their lights and under no circumstances close their eyes for any extended period of time. And so, hello, it's an angel. Good evening and welcome to the Torchwood Report. We are live on the Liberty Radio Network. I am the one true Niz. Matthew Taylor has the evening off tonight, so we are joined by Mr. Paul Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul Gordon. Right, from iState.tv. That's right. If you don't know Paul, then you're not paying attention. No, if you haven't seen Paul Gordon's work on iState TV, actually, some of my articles are now appearing in Daily Sheeple, dailysheeple.com. Right. You're definitely not paying attention because this guy's got his fingers in everything. He's everywhere. Wow. He is Facebook. Like, you look up Facebook, and you're going to see the first thing you're going to see is Zuck. Second thing you're going to see is Gordon. Zuck Gordon, actually, right. is my right. nickname. Paul Zucker Gordon. Paul Zucker. Oh, I like that. You know what? Right. I'm going to create you got, you got to a Facebook use that. page. <laughs> oh, okay. Gordon. Let me Bipcot this sucker. This broadcast is covered by the Bipcot No Government License. That means that you are free to use or rebroadcast portions or segments of this show so long as you are not an agent or advocate for government. If you fail to heed this warning, you will be socially shamed. For yeah. more information, please go to bipcot.org. That's B I P C O T dot org. And I'm really good at socially shaming. You put me on that job, dude. I'm on it. I'm right. I'm right. You better watch out because a, thought, no, a lot of people, not. there are a lot of people who previously espoused the nap who are now advocating punching people. So <laughs> better watch out. There are. There, you might get some, some might shifting get of the understanding of the nap. Right. Definitely. <laughs> Words, Words are, are bullets. bullets. Oh, That's right. Trigger warning. Uh, so before we get into anything uh, hot and heavy tonight, we're going to go over a couple quickies. Uh, just some things that uh, I'd like to mention before uh, we get into the bulk of the show. Uh, tonight we're going to be uh, talking about uh, price gouging. Oh, I can't wait for that one. That's going to be a good Canceled one. econ classes. Apparently, there's a lot of people in the Libertarian Party and uh, all over the place that uh, consider themselves "quote unquote" capitalists that uh, missed, uh, missed like, like the, the first, first week, week of uh, econ, econ class. class. They uh, yeah, totally forgot, forgot the uh, concept of supply and demand and how it works. Are we so doing price gouging right now? I am gouging. Are we are we, are we diving into price gouging right now? Oh no, no! I just want to go over some oh, things. Okay, 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 Let's just go okay, over some things. Like, I actually hey, got. Give me the meat. <laughs> I actually got blocked this week by someone on Facebook who considers himself a libertarian, uh, who bills themselves as a libertarian. Uh, got unfriended and blocked because they got so angry over price gouging. Uh, so that's kind of what prompted me to want to go into this because you're stupid. Were they woke? That's why. You're stupid and you're a communist. But were they uh, woke? We're going to talk about some crazy things here coming from the left. Uh, California wants to lock people up over gender pronouns. Uh, town in Michigan uh, outlawing straight people, uh, gender price control inspectors. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a bunch of stuff. So anyway, want to get to the quick stuff. Uh, Milwaukee Shaved. Milwaukee Shaved. I got to. I hope Matt's listening right now to see that he's got me tongue-tied. This is what Matt does right off the top of the show. 
Uh, he tends to get all tongue-tied and twisted up and can't say words. Those words are hard. Uh, anyway, uh, Wisconsin Trump supporter David Clark, outspoken hey. Milwaukee County Sheriff, and one of the highest profile members of law enforcement resigned from his position on Thursday. Clark issued a retirement statement to local media hours after his resignation was announced, saying, after almost 40 years serving the great people of Milwaukee County, I've chosen to re uh, retire and pursue other opportunities. Clark added, I will have news about my next steps in the very near future. Hopefully there are uh, steps off a long walk off a short period, if you know what I mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been told that I have an echo, and I'm trying to see if I've gotten rid of my echo. If anybody out there is listening, let me know if I still have an echo. Do you hear an echo there? This is a I don't hear an echo now. on your side, so I think that's just whatever you're doing over there. So Whatever I'm you, doing you, over You here. go ahead. you got a couple of minutes here before we really, before I need you. <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> right? Okay. you got a couple of minutes before I need you. Uh, retired United States Army Colonel Joseph Baptiste, 64, of Fulton, Maryland, was arrested and charged on Tuesday for conspiring to bribe senior officials of the Republic of Haiti and to launder funds for that purpose in connection with a planned $84 million port development project in that country. According to court documents, in or about August 2014, an investigation began into certain Haitian-American businessmen who were offering to facilitate bribes to high-level officials in the Haitian government in exchange for the ability to obtain or retain business in that country. Uh, so, yeah, bribery going on there. That's a big one. Hey, bribery, that's because of capitalism. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. This news brought to you by Salon.com. <laughs> uh, no coal missiles over Japan. North Korea fired an unidentified ballistic missile over Japan for the first time in eight years in defiance of the U.S. and allies in the region. Pentagon said that we're still in the process of assessing this launch. North American Aerospace Defense Command known as NORAD, determined the missile launch from North Korea did not pose a threat to North America, probably because it flew over Japan. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know uh, if North Pentagon America and Japan that. are the same thing or not. <laughs> right, I, right. Might as well be California. I got to look uh, up my working. special geography. <laughs> right, my right, my right. common core geography. Right, my common core atlas that I'm looking at. Let me get right. out my uh, my government globe. <laughs> right. I know that it says Japan, but I think it's actually if you... If you show your work, it ends up <laughs> right, being New right. Mexico. <laughs> you but gotta you got to show, show your, your work. You'll still get credit. Right. Right. You'll get, uh, you get partial credit. Uh, NORAD said we're working closely with Pacific Command, Strategic Command, and NORAD, and we'll provide an update as soon as possible. South Korean military said the missile flew about 1,700 miles with a height of uh, 341 miles. That's lower than the 2,300 miles into space an intercontinental ballistic missile traveled in late July. North Korea's July 4th ICBM traveled some 1,700 miles into space. That's a lot of space. That is That's a, a space is racist. I don't know if you were listening uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, no, actually, space is not racist space. right now because it's non-whites that did that. So it's right. right, it was the eclipse. Uh, so a nurse says that she was assaulted and illegally arrested by Salt Lake City Police Detective for following hospital policy that does not allow blood draws from unconscious patients. Footage of the University Hospital and officer body camera show Detective Jeff Payne and nurse Alex Wubbles in a standoff over whether the policeman should be allowed to get a blood sample from a patient who had been injured in a July 26 collision in northern Utah that left another driver dead. Wubbles says blood cannot be taken from an unconscious patient unless that patient is under arrest unless there's a warrant allowing the draw or unless the patient consents. Uh, long story short, uh, the officer said, I don't care what your policy is, do it now or I'm going to arrest you. Uh, she said no, and he arrested her. She so did not that. consent, and yet he, he persisted. Right. Uh, so now we're going to move on that, to the most. That, that's a shame that you put the nurse story in the fast-paced one, because that one... Yeah, it's all you over the what? place. And it's You're gonna have to be on one of my shows, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to explore the fun possibilities with that story. We it's we loaded. We absolutely can. But here's the thing, and this is the reason why I put this in the quickies, is because this video, all you have to do if you're a person, a reasonable person, is just watch this video, and you'll instantly know that this is wrong. 
What yeah, you'll instantly know that you don't need a investigation to tell you that the dude should be fired and all the knobheads, all the knobheads with stars on their chest should also be fired for just standing around herpaderping. When you're right. herpaderp and you're a member of the same gang and one of your gang members is herpaderping someone else, you're all guilty of the same herpaderp. If, right. I mean, if you understand herpaderp logic. Which I do. Right. It's kind of like Smurf. Right. It's, right. A, it's a lot exactly. like Smurf. Smurf. Yeah, don't He's Smurf. You Smurf. Right. She got you Smurf lose. in the Smurf. Right. You smurf, uh, you most lose. ridiculous. Most ridiculous thing I've seen all week. A set of oh, we're gonna have to cover that one when we get back because we're running out of time. Needless to say, fifty-four-year-old uh, can join twins having a fight over uh, who gets to masturbate with their shared penis. <laughs> it's a legal battle. So there you go. Uh, oh, stick oh, around. We'll be right back with the torture report coming up. Going to be talking about price gouging. Don't want to go away. So now we have, can we talk? Now we can. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to wait because I don't know. So when, because remember, we have another live audience. We're on LRN.FM, everyone, if you want <laughs> right, to hear right. the radio version. But we're also <laughs> on, we're actually on Facebook. two Facebook pages right now, right? We're on. Three or four. We're on uh, Liberty Principle, we're on my my personal page, we're on the Torchwood Report, we're on Rebels of Liberty, and we're on Disassociation Nation. And we're, we're oh, I remember people. that. I remember Disassociation Nation. So right. so how about while we're on break? You wanna you wanna go back to the nurse story, dude? I wanna go back to these conjoined twins. Okay, let's do this that. Is, let's you know what? Is You're news. right. Let's say the, I mean, the, this... the nurse I'm sure people don't want to hear a meaningful story. They'd rather Actually, I would rather hear about the conjoined twins myself. <laughs> right, so right. we're going to give you what the LRN.FM audience isn't getting right, right now. We're going to give missing. you a, a, a nice, healthy masturbation story. Right. So these uh, 54-year-old conjoined twins from Michigan are facing each other in court as one of the siblings is contesting his brother's right to engage in sexual acts without his consent. Wow. They share weeds. They and, share weeds. Uh, wait, wait. They share Hold weeds. on. They share, there's one, two heads and one wing? There's two bodies. They're conjoined, like, around the stomach area, and wow. they sh there was only one wing between the two of them. I did and not right know now, this was a two-head, one wing story. I haven't heard right. one of these since 1976. This is <laughs> right. amazing. So, uh, yeah, there's a shared penis, and it's become a major source of conflict, apparently. <laughs> That's kind of uh, like the Republicans one brother... and the Democrats. They share a penis. <laughs> right. so one it's... brother is pro-masturbation. <laughs> The other brother is against masturbation, and uh, a legal battle ensues. Well, <laughs> you know what you do. You when we're we're not on there, so I can be a little bit more graphic, right? Right, but we gotta watch. Okay, I'm gonna rely on you. You gotta ping me. Well, I, all I can do is listen. <laughs> all the can music's do. coming back in. I don't want to be. Like, in the middle of a conversation in which I'm describing, essentially, these two guys showing up in a courtroom, you do something to stir the ween, and you see, which way does it tilt? If it tilts towards right, the right. one, the non-masturbator, right. then the ween is clearly with the non best The ween belongs to the non-masturbator. If it tilts to the it's other... Like a, it's like a, a dowsing rod. It's, yeah, yeah. Either, it's never laid... Right. Yeah, you either, or you things. or you do the Solomon test. You threaten to cut off the ween and give right, it cut it in half and see which one says, "I would rather give the ween to him than the ween to be cut." It's, and you're like, "Well, then clearly the, you're the, the real ween thing. owner." Here's the crazy thing: this has happened in Michigan. Michigan doesn't have any laws or guidelines for individuals sharing the same genital organs. I don't know why. But California not. does. <laughs> Wow, California thought yeah. that detail. Right, That's, a bill passed in 2011. I don't want to live in that state. <laughs> I don't want to live in a state where they had the fortitude, the foresight to <laughs> to think out, what do we right. do if two people share one penis? We have to have a What if a there's C-SPAN footage, C-SPAN footage of the debate in the legislature? <laughs> the one wing debate. <laughs> <laughs> and now, on the side of masturbation, free for all, is John McKay. Oh, Lord. I forget why am I here? Yeah, right, okay. right. So that's oh my! I I can't believe that I missed this. I look for weird stories, and I missed this weird. Oh, it's a story. great one. 
I actually feel I feel kind of gypped. Actually, I might rip this story off and use this in the next Lazilla episode. So, so Bodie, if you're I think we're going to be coming back here right after this. Okay, might be one more little commercial. All right, we're going to be quiet now. Everybody who's listening on the Facebooks, be quiet while we get ready to come back. Welcome back to the Torchwood Report live on the Liberty Radio Network. I am the one true Niz here this evening with Paul Gordon of iState.tv. Matthew Taylor is off for the evening. He'll be back next week, though, hopefully. Actually, did uh, you? Oh, I can't say that on radio. Never mind. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> We're live streaming on Facebook, so we could say some things on Facebook. Right, right, we right. Can't That's say actually on the radios. We're, we we don't have the call in line set up tonight because uh, we're 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 doing a, a, a dual broadcast on uh, on Facebook as well under Facebook Live. Uh, just trying to get some. Ex- let's expand the reach of our audience. Uh, yes. So we have the the call in line shut off because there's only so many things. That we could do at once, okay? Because we got a lot of stuff going on all at once. Only certain number of things. We're at our. We're just about at our threshold. Well, we're not like we're, that last story we covered. We're not sharing a certain resource, so right. We're not. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no that's pretty. That's pretty. Here's the thing, man. Like we said oh, during the break. Here's the thing of, of to the takeaway from this most ridiculous thing of the week is that uh, this set of 54-year-old conjoined twins from Michigan that are fighting over who gets to use and when they get to use their shared penis. Um, can I say penis? You can say penis, yes, penis. absolutely. I, I will, I will uh, I'll allow it. I'm glad I can say that word, <laughs> penis. I said it. Uh, the crazy, the, the big takeaway from this is, at the moment, Michigan state law doesn't include any guidelines for individuals that share the same genitalia. But uh, the only state to have a law Concerning the sexuality of conjoined twins is California, who passed a bill in 2011. So that's and the takeaway from this. And if anybody could find that, like Niz said, if anybody could find that C-SPAN debate, please, please message, right. message the crew at the Torchwood Report. Where can they reach right, the right. Torchwood definitely, Report? Definitely hit us up on Facebook at the Torchwood Report on Facebook and uh, post that link or something because I would absolutely that. love you- I would love to see the debate in the legislature concerning the legality of uh, shared genitalia, just so I could see the uh, obvious uncomfortableness of the uh, state legislature. It'd be really great if you could only find like a 10 to 20 minute video, and then we could create a 10 hour loop video on YouTube with it. I think. think. Rick, Rick, roll them. Oh uh, yeah, we'll so, put Rick rolls in between each. Right, see that the hypno toad. Oh, right, oh, hip- oh. be awesome. Uh, so before the break, we said we we're going to get into price gouging. This we is are. A good one. Uh, so a tale of canceled econ classes. I've been getting hammered on Facebook uh, over this price gouging. You should nonsense. be hammered on Facebook. I'm Maybe not fighting for this, with, but for other. Listen, reasons. I can't believe that I have to fight with libertarians over this kind of stuff. I mean, this blows my mind. Anyway, the, the story here is that uh, recently Best Buy said it's deeply sorry after a photo taken at the Houston store, which appeared to show a case of water selling for $42 in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Wait, on how, Tuesday, how much? How, wait, hold on. 42 bucks. How much is in a case of soda? Let's I mean, say case of uh, water. Let's figure out how much is being charged here. Well, it, 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 uh, it explains all this. I, I'll, I'll get oh, to okay, it. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I'll get to it. I'm going to weigh all the this shark. Out. Uh, you did, totally. Uh, so on Tuesday, a reporter shared uh, an image sent to him from a Houston resident. The image showed a Best Buy in Texas charging forty two ninety six for a case of Dasani water. Uh, it also showed the price for a case of Smart Water at $29 with a sign saying limited supply. Uh, now, many people who don't understand basic economics took to Twitter and Facebook and other social media to complain about what they considered overpriced water as a case usually costs between $15 and $26. Many users said that the retailers are gouging residents. Gouge. Best Buy said that the sale was clearly a mistake on the part of a few employees at a single store. The company said that it doesn't have a price for cases of water in its, uh, in its point of sale system and that the employees price the water by multiplying the cost of one bottle 
by the number of bottles in the case. During a natural disaster in Texas, like Hurricane Harvey, it's illegal to charge illegal. consumers excessive prices. Wait, for wait, I thought Texas was a thing. conservative state. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought they were like pro-free market. And right, capitalism. keep telling yourself that. Right, right. Okay. Nobody understands what capitalism okay. is anyway. If you want proof for that, go on Facebook and say it's okay to price gouge people during an emergency. And uh, you'll see the heads explode and you'll understand that everybody's a communist today. Well, uh, there are no to, to, to be fair, the quote unquote libertarians, at least in the anarcho crowd, they're they're not invoking my laws. They're invoking my moralities. Laws. Uh, so the Texas Attorney General <laughs> Texas Attorney General's office said that there have already been six hundred complaints about price gouging during Hurricane Harvey, mostly about drinking water and gasoline. Big surprise. Brad Carpenter with the Texas Attorney General's office told NBC News. You can't charge 10, 15, 20 times what the product costs at a normal time. Um, he also told uh, the office's investigators have been checking these complaints and will hold businesses accountable for price gouging. Salon.com went on to say... Hold businesses uh, accountable. Right. The way you got... The Salon.com is... This is the, this is the, the, the kicker for this. You want to go uh, to a they fair and partial source right here. Right. You have to. Right, right. right. They described the situation by saying... Capitalism has been described as creative destruction. Oh, I like In the worst that, case actually. scenario, it's human beings who are destroyed. The market doesn't care. Profits over people is the true golden rule, and the invisible hand is at work in its most cruel form. <laughs> they, they Hurricane... I'm sorry, okay. I got to interrupt you. They they, they do under, they do understand that profits over people is if you want to make profit. And you want to put profit over people. You you may be able to make profit for a little while, but after a while, the people are like, "Yo, man, I ain't buying from you." I guess they don't understand right. that basic basic. They don't know. They're basically. another group of people who failed econ 101. Uh, so they go on to say that Hurricane Harvey and its horrific aftermath will be an exercise in disaster capitalism. I'm liking Harvey, this. This is right, awesome. right, right. Harvey and its aftermath offer an opportunity for gangster capitalists to further undermine. I like that too. And the public square. Harvey has created a stage on which profiteers and price gougers will take advantage of a desperate public. Oh, my now, gosh. D I'm going to have a rant. I've got a rant. So okay, you do your up. rant, and then I'll come in on, buckle up. on the okay. awesome phrases. Again, this is illuminating the widespread lack of understanding basic economics. So let's go there. This is a really simple question of supply and demand. When supply is down and demand is up, Prices get raised. <gasps> Surprise. On the surface, the simpletons who like, you know, not using their brains and only applying knee-jerk reactions, relying on the logic of feels, this is bad. To them, it appears as heartless greed. But that's not necessarily the whole story. You see, higher prices stave off shortages by discouraging frivolous purchases of scarce goods. In other words, when the supply is low and the price is high, you're going to ask, do I really, really need to buy out the store's entire supply? If the prices have been raised or gouged, such a scary sounding word, oh my, gouged, the answer, depending on the situation, will be no. This helps to ensure that the limited supply is not pushed into shortage territory, a situation that I'm sure you'd agree is far worse than higher prices. Zero supply. We're going to continue this after the break, but I'll tell you this. I'd rather pay 50 bucks for a gallon of fresh, clean drinking water than have no drinking water available at all. Stick around. We're still talking about price gouging when we come back from the Tortured Report live on LRN.FM. So uh, this is such a stupid conversation. Dude, dude, dude. Salon gave me actually Bodie's listening. Andrew Marich, you're listening. Andrew Marich does agora.threadless.com. You, you got to get over there. And I'm telling you, Andrew, there are some, some great t shirts. You got some t shirt here. material here, buddy. <laughs> you have <laughs> creative destruction. Oh my gosh, I want that. I uh, want uh, disaster capitalism. Disaster <laughs> ca capitalism? Are you guys? I, I, right. I, can I trade? Would I be anti Bibcotty if I trademarked that? I'm going to trademark <laughs> that and license Bodie. Bodie, you do the design for that. I, I totally want disaster capitalism in my. Oh, oh, and this is my favorite. 
gangster capitalist. Gangster Dude. capitalism. Dude, I want that. I want like like pigs, like greedy pigs with like money shooting out of their ears. The gold chains. Gold chains. Holding gats. <laughs> Who's my pigger? Who's my pigger? <laughs> Oh, oh you didn't Brody. you didn't Who's say that pega? out loud. <laughs> Gangster capitalism. And who's my pega? It's gotta be oh, my pega. Oh my god. Gangster capitalism. <laughs> on the top crazy. and then underneath. Who's my pega? Come on, Bodie. <laughs> you you gotta you make that it. happen. You can do it. <laughs> so these things that you mean these things that you mean for for uh uh bad. I'm going to use for good. <laughs> Thank you, Salon. I totally right. own that. Thanks thanks for that. I, I thanks. totally own Gangsta Cap. They're so ridiculous, man. They are so it's, ridiculous. Well, you know, I, you know, I, it really comes, I don't know how much time we, how, how long is this commercial break? I don't want to get on a long it's a here. It's a couple minutes. Okay. So, you know, to me, this, this. Everybody frames their life. Well, I won't say everybody. I don't want to use absolutes. But but a lot of people, they frame their lives around a few key, really good, feel-word, virtue-signaling words like self-sacrifice and uh, virtue and crap like that. And because they do that, <laughs> they, they don't want to face I, – I, I think whether I don't know if it's an ugly truth, but it's a truth that at the end of the day that the, the what you do is for you. You can't act except in your own best interest or what you perceive. You're not. You might not necessarily be acting in your best interest, but you yeah, perceive what you perceive as your best interest. You perceive as your best interest. You have you have some some preferences in your life, and you do things, and you create these little buzzwords. That that puts you in a place where you don't have to face maybe maybe mm. the parts of you that you would fear that maybe people wouldn't like, like the fact that yeah, I totally want to make money off this joint. I totally, I totally want to. I want to make as much a profit as I possibly can. It's 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 what, what that I had listened to recently was somebody was one of these YouTubers. They were talking about with Adzilla. And their concern was that, well, you know, I don't know all these YouTubers, you know, they're worried about using ad revenues and, you know, I don't just do this for the money. Dude, if you do this for the money, if you only do this for the money, I'm totally fine with that. That's like gangster <laughs> capitalism, dude. Sign right. me up, man. You be my pigger. Who wants to be my pigger? John my pig a crowd, you know? We're coming back. <laughs> oh, we're coming back. All right. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about price gouging. Evil, evil, disaster. What do they say? Disaster capitalism? Gangster capitalism. <laughs> Gangster capitalism. I probably can't Good repeat Lord. what I said during the break, can I? Probably not. I, won't. <laughs> I probably I won't wouldn't go there. I won't probably do it. Wouldn't go there. It had the word uh, pig in it. Right. <laughs> so, I can't go fast that. Good, Good Lord. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, before the break, we are talking about price gouging. And I said, this is a very, very simple. You just need to understand supply and demand. Uh, and then it goes away. It's not evil anymore. This is not something evil. It's not something to be afraid of. Like I said, uh, I'd rather have uh, I, I'd, I'd rather have a higher price uh, and have the market control the supply rather than have zero supply. I'd rather pay 50 bucks for a gallon of fresh, clean drinking water than have no clean drinking water available at all. Uh, so reduced to its simplest terms, High prices reduce demand and encourage con uh, conservation. For producers, these high prices encourage people to bring more goods to where they're needed. If, let's say, water can be bought in areas that are not affected by the emergency for a lower price and then transported to the area and sold at a higher price, this creates a profit incentive for people to do exactly that, bring in the supplies that are needed. 
And this increase in supply in that particular area. And if you remember from your basic Econ 101 class, it seems that most people either fell asleep in or failed altogether. Increased supply equals competitive pricing and inevitably lower prices. This acts as a signal to the market that more of that scarce good is needed. It also works as a check against hoarding by encouraging conservation of that scarce good. This is how markets work. I shouldn't have to spend time explaining this to libertarians. Besides, what's, what's the alternative here? Price controls that lead to shortages and then waiting for the government to ration that remaining supply during a shortage? That just sounds like a bad time. I'd rather pay more for that gallon of gas or a case of water than have to rely on the government to save me because time after time, government has proven that when it comes to saving people, they end up being rather incompetent and far, far less reliable. Just look at what's happening right now in South Texas in these areas affected by Hurricane Harvey. People from all over the country have seen this, oh my God, they're price gouging people. So they're loading up cars with donated water and bringing that water into the area. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. You, if you don't like price gouging, then get off your proverbial, whatever your proverbial happens to be. My proverbial is my my, my back end, by the way. Right. Uh, as Forrest Gump would say, my butt talks. My butt talks. My butt talks. Uh, my name is Forrest Gump. I just kept running. Well, anyway, you threw me into a Forrest, Forrest Gump loop there, but I, I couldn't I help my, I pulled myself back out. Uh, there's, oh no, I'm back. <laughs> I'm about ready to go through the jumbo speech. Don't, don't, don't get me in the shrimp speech, dude. Am I getting this <laughs> their jumbo shrimp? And you, you just do it with taxes. There's all you can have all kinds of taxes. Oh, yeah, you can you have, have property that. tax and income tax and Excise tax. tax. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't uh, like so, it, go do something about it. Go bring some some free whatever and 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 see right, what I mean, would I don't happen. understand. I don't understand why people have such a big you know uh, make such a big deal about this. I mean, if, if you before the storm, let, let's. I, I'm originally from the north, so I know how this goes with snowstorms. Every time that the you know the, the meteorologist comes on TV and says, "Wow, oh, there's a bad snowstorm coming towards us," everybody runs to the store to buy their bread, milk, and eggs. And every time you end up going there, if you're if you're late on it, man, let me tell you, if he says that that stuff at noon, then by the time you get out of work at five o'clock, there's no milk left. Well, if you had a gallon and a half of milk in your refrigerator. And the store said, okay, well, now's the time to raise the price on that gallon of milk to like $8 a gallon. You would take your happy little behind over to the Walmart and say, oh, whoa, 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 I ain't I buying that milk. There. What do you right. mean by happy behind? Do you, how happy do you know behind? that somebody's behind is happy? Do they have well, like a happy behind glow? Was well, you know, when them? everybody is rushing to Walmart and to, you know, the... Uh, when I'm rushing to Walmart, I, there's no happy behind. Buy their bread, the milk, and eggs. It's more like no, a wrong. panic behind. It's like a like a tightened entrapment that's going on. If I said too much, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> but the point is, anymore. the point is, you have that gallon and a half of milk in your refrigerator. You're going to go to the to the supermarket. You're going to see that eight dollar a gallon milk, and you're going to go, oh no, I'm I'm not going to get it. Now at the same time, the person who maybe they used up the last bit of their milk. Uh, this morning, and maybe they have, uh, you know, a, a small kids or baby, or even if it's baby formula or something like that, they need it. They're going to put a higher value on it because they don't have it, and they're willing to pay that $8 because they need it. They're going to have that supply there rather than you walking in and buying up. I got two and a half gallons of milk, so I wouldn't bought three more just to make yeah. sure I don't run out. And actually, you saw some videos of some, well, pictures I saw. I didn't see any videos, but I think there are probably some videos out there, too. Of people pulling up to the gas tank with the ginormous tanks and right, and, like fifteen and, five-gallon and, containers see, in they the trunk. They don't do that if price gouging occurs. I said the the other thing that happens with price gouging, and maybe you, you hinted at it there, but and we we kind of hinted at it. You know the the people. It's a weird thing, but people are weird. Like. They want to profit off of one another. They totally want to exploit one another. And yet they also want to help one another. So when they see their fellow human being 
non-gendered human being in need. When they see Xi and Zhu. When they see Xi and Zhao. When Xi and Zhu and Zhao. Is that, are those the new genders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I something totally like that. totally go with that. <laughs> yeah, flim, flam, and flom. You know what? I am the Zhao of gangster <laughs> capitalism. Right. Okay. <laughs> I won't. I won't go further. There's a. There's a rant that could happen there. But <laughs> this is a PG show, so you're gonna have people that are gonna step in, and and what's gonna happen is. If you get a bunch of people bringing in free supplies, guess what's going to happen? That price gouging, that price is going to go down. You're like, All right, it's going to go down. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let the market do what, if you believe in uh, spontaneous order, then, then shut the heck up. Get out of the way. I'm not saying that I'm going to stand up top the rooftop, wave my flag of price gouging glory and celebrate and say, yeah. Price gouging is awesome. I'm gonna be like, yo, just just let it work itself out. If you let it work itself out, I'm not saying that you still might not end up with shortages because if you don't have supplies, you don't have supplies. But it's a whole lot less likely that you'll end up with shortage. Because what's going on in Texas now? Even you know, and folks I've saw Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and areas, they're reporting gas shortages right now. And one of the reasons is because all the folks in that region, the man in in the in the in the in the affected area, they're hoarding it up, dude. Because right, they're filling they up. Can. They're filling up fifteen five gallon containers of gas that they have in the back of the pickup truck because they and know that gas is going to. I'm not blaming them. Right, but if you raise the price on that fuel, that guy's going to go and look at all those five gallon gas cans and be like, oh, I'm going to wait till this shit's over. Before or, I or, or, or at the very least, they're going to be looking and say, okay, what do I really essentially, what is the bottom, what is the most essential amount that I need? Right. What like, do I, I need? Yeah. What do I need? Like right now? Not like I'm going to plan for the end of the world. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And the and other thing you're going to have, ironically, is because you can't stop the black market. Good luck regulating the black market in the conditions that are there right now. Let them know when the conditions are perfect. Good luck regulating the black market in those conditions. So what you're going to end up with is the smart people. They're going to go hoard. And then guess what they're going to do? They're going to price gouge. But they're going to be. They're not going to be businesses. They're not going to be licensed people. They're not going to be millers. Right. If you, by the way, look up Miller medieval times, and you know what I mean. The Miller is essentially the tax collector. That's what right. a lot of small business, small retail businesses are. Right. And what's the alternative? What's the alternative? You rely on the government, which is never a good right. idea. That's always <laughs> a bad idea. That's that's like Plan Z twelve thirteen B Z Z Z Z. Right. You know, let's not do it. It's so be the music a plan is in A through Z before you get there. Music is in. Means we're going to a break. Stick around. Be right back. I love all these people that are like, oh, my God, they're price gouging. That's so horrible. They're heartless. Like, uh, like no, like not really. People. I'm very fond not of Not really. You know, the, the horrible people that I'm fond of are the people that own their horribilicity. Uh, and, and generally speaking, I think when you own your horribilicity, uh, I think you come to a place where you end up, I think, actually being more useful to the community than the people who hide behind uh, hide behind the the ghosts of of a virtuous sounding words <laughs> that that cut off their critical thinking and don't don't really get them to ask the hard questions what's in it for me yeah yeah i embrace what's in it for me what do you think of that niz i embrace what's in it for me you embrace what's you hear in this it for me? here it is my oh, magic mark okay you hear it? Well, let me turn this up. You guys want to listen. and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, All right. software, well, I got the end of that. photo, cell phone, office was... rock, home and garden, bed and bath. I'm going to turn this back down, kitchen, though. You guys can hear this louder. Apparel, if you heard it louder, shoes, let me know. Grocery, let me see if it sports works. And outdoors, toys, games, used and more. If they have a funny commercial, I'll try to play the funny for commercials. The Magic Mud is good. 
And when they have the onion commercials, those are good. So, so do you embrace your inner what's in it for me guy? Or are you embracing the altruistic guy? I say embrace it. Own it. Yeah. Own it. Yeah, I, I, I say you, you follow where go down that rabbit hole and uh, figure out your place in the world. Figure out what 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 does it mean? What's in it for me? And, and and you know, interesting. I believe if you go down that rabbit hole, you start to make connections. You start to understand. Like we were talking about the uh, Joel Osteen thing, and I didn't know whether. Well, I still don't know what's fact or fiction with that story. But one thing tells me that Joel Osteen closing his his shop, his church. Uh, didn't make sense. Even if you're totally self-centered, if Joel Osteen has embraced his what's in it for me guy, if he's totally fleecing everyone he possibly can, <laughs> there is no freaking way that Joel Osteen could possibly think him and his team of ad wizards could get together and say, hey, you know what would be really good? to get people to come back after this is <laughs> right. over and get us right. more money. If we let's, lock let's... everyone out during a giant natural disaster. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good move. What, See, when, what when would Jesus have... do? Right. Well, no. yeah. What would Jesus do? Chain up the doors. Right. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking Jesus out of the <laughs> Fuck equation. Fuck let him drown. So, but, uh, wow. So <laughs> it's not pra – if you embrace the what's in it for me, you actually start to understand how you're connected to people around you. And then I'm, I'm not for any kind of artificial restraint on price gouging, but you might look at it and say, dude, I got an opportunity here, man. I could make some – it's like that, that mattress guy that's opened up his business to let people stay in his business and sleep on his beds and sending out his right. trucks to help. That dude is going to make, make some, some sales. He's going to make some sales. Right. We're, you know? we're, we're coming back here. All right. Welcome back. You're listening to the Torchwood Report live on the Liberty Radio Network. I am the one true Niz here this evening with Mr. Paul Gordon from iState.tv. iState.tv. When you hear it said like that, you want to go to iState. You want to go watch it, TV. listen, and read. Well, uh, yeah. so Lee, before the break, watch we're, videos. Yeah. We're, we're talking about price gouging and uh, how everyone seems to have missed their basic economics class or failed it. I don't uh, know if they way. offered it, actually. I think they, they, they were just, uh, I think they between, took it away. In between the uh, gender studies class and the, hey, hey, we're actually going to get to that story, are we? Yeah, we're actually, that's a, that, we're, let's see what happened here. This is a natural transition into the next, into the next topic. This is actually a story from mystate.tv. I know those guys. Uh, they, well, actually, we're going to start here first stuff. with the we're going to start here first with the uh, new California bill. That's where we're going to start this little sucker. Can I sing a song before we start? You can sing song. Sure, why not? Let's go. California is druggy, 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 druggy. California. <laughs> what song is that? Fat boy slim. That's a little fat boy slim for you. Okay. Now, California. Don't, all I got to say is stick to iState TV. Don't put your date <laughs> No, job. no, no. I'm getting messages right now. <laughs> Ladies, I'm married. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it so, with these uh, pictures. Very inappropriate. I'll a new bill is being considered by the California State Senate, which would punish people who willfully and repeatedly refuse to use a transgender resident's preferred name or pronouns in a public health, retirement, or housing institution. Yeah. Hey, this we... bill, SB 219, was proposed by State Senator Scott Weiner. Oh, this is a Democrat test from San Oh, my Francisco. gosh, it's a Weiner. Another Weiner reference. In right, show. there's another Weiner. Nice. Right? Weiner's Weiner. I tried to get two this of those This is not that same Weiner. No, this is not a shared Weiner. 
This is a solo <laughs> yeah, wiener. Yeah, right, right. This is a different wiener from the wiener <laughs> okay. that we all know. Right. Uh, the wiener totally, that we all know. Totally unrelated yes, wiener absolutely. here. Absolutely. Unrelated. <laughs> and this is the un- and now in our unrelated wiener segment right, of the right. show. <laughs> what was his what was his name? Scott was Wiener. Cr- no, 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 no. Wiener's Wiener. What was his name? I don't What was his like online handle? It was something crazy like uh Oh oh, oh you mean Anthony? Oh yeah, I what forget was his... it. It's it's whatever. It was something ridiculous. It's whatever. Uh, it's not it it that's actually isn't it's whatever, <laughs> but it's like super uh, so anyway something. let's get away from wiener's wiener and uh talk well, about we scott can, wiener because we're talking about scott wiener we're not right. getting away from wiener so sb219 it includes several other provisions that require a health facility for example to honor the gender identity of a patient meaning the patient must be admitted to a room that comports with his or her chosen gender and did you see what they did right there like well, it started off there? with a his or her Right, that they didn't even use that their proper pronouns in this article. Good Lord. Unbelievable. Uh, so, Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, his or her chosen gender. Allowed to use whatever bathroom he or she wants to use and wear whatever clothing or cosmetics he or she decides to wear has gone through several amendments. Uh, CBN News notes fines for repeat offenders could be as high as $1,000 and a jail term of one year. For my words. For my words. For I'm going to lock you up. CBN also reports that the testimony of the California Families Council's Greg Burt says, how can you believe in free speech but think that the government can compel people to use certain pronouns when talking to others? This is not tolerance. This is not love. This is not mutual respect. True tolerance tolerates people with different views. We need to treat each other with respect, but respect is a two-way street. It's not respectful to threaten people with punishment for having sincerely held beliefs that differ from your own. California Democrats have also taken up with transgender cause as part of their resistance to President Donald Trump. Resistance. In February, when the Trump administration reversed an Obama administration directive on transgender bathrooms in public schools, thus allowing states and local communities to set their own policies again, California protested vigorously in favor of the idea that the federal government should impose a uniform standard everywhere as a matter of civil rights. Wait, so did California so, advocate for surrendering states' rights? Dude, I want to party with those guys. I, I mean, actually, <laughs> well, I probably want to slip a Mickey into their drinks and then drag them off and throw them over a bridge. But that's beside the point. I'm so, just going to leave it at, I want to party with those guys. So this can be summed up as California wants to lock up Zhu uh, for not calling Jim by the designated pronoun. D- dude, is this even real? Is this even real life oh, this anymore? Is a test. This is a test. What they what they're doing is they're 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 not trying to broadly apply it. They're going to apply it in a very narrow place, in a very that affects a very a small number of people. So they're gonna see well how to how do they react? And if there's not a huge uproar, if there's not total outright I mean I don't know that they're going to get much uh, rebellion from this. It's like, who, who the heck is running nursing homes? It's like, who really cares? They're like, okay, whatever. I don't freaking care. Whatever. Right. Well, and that, that, and I don't think they're going to get much. I mean, you're I, like I, the I, old I, folks are going to be like, yeah, no, I resist. The old guys are probably like, oh, you mean the ladies can come in here? <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. Right. I don't see a whole lot of like, you know. Uh, it's a good uh, starting point. Are there, are there World War II vets in nursing homes and, and, and Korean War vets and Vietnam vets in nursing you got homes? Got that on the brain, like, dude. Right, right, and they're the and they're sitting around in a nursing home and they're like, "You better call me by my correct pronoun." I, I don't, don't think so. I this don't is going to go. You're right. No, no, this, this is, is a this test. is a test. This is a, test. a test. Nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to care. And then they're like, "Okay, we could expand this." And then when they yeah, start to extend this a little bit further. Oh, wait. Now you have a problem with it? Oh, we did it over right. here. Nobody said it. You're a Nazi. You Nazi. A, you're a Nazi. Be a commie Nazi. I want to be a commie Nazi when I grow up. Not not literally, but like I want to be at that. Actually, I'm already at that place. All right, I get accused of being a Nazi and a commie, sometimes in one right. sentence by the same person. I think that's an accomplishment. 
<laughs> that's high five worthy. That's true. Uh, high five. True. I, I oh. beat in your Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh, so moving along here, uh, this is also from Salon.com. Uh, oh, you, you're they have picking, this, what is it about you picking Salon? Well, I hear. I yeah, here's here's me. the thing, right? So, so I, at originally at one point in time, I had uh, I had set up in my uh, in my news aggregate. Uh, all of these, um, you know, uh, conservative, right-wing, uh, libertarian uh, uh, outlets. So I saw this news coming from, and I realized, like, man, you know, the best stuff to talk about is the stuff that comes out from the left. So I changed it. I no longer follow any of those. I, I, I mean, I do to an extent, but the Calm majority me. of the stuff this that's is, in this, my news aggregate is, is like the Salon, the, the Atlantic. Here, I can... I won't look them up. Anyway, it's like Salon, The Atlantic, MSNBC. Yeah, the this is a slippery New York slope. Times. Like, this is the stuff that, that, that they're putting out. So I want to address this because this is the idiocy that they think, like, the, the, this is the greatest ideas. And it's really st stupid. Really stupid. So, uh, again, from Salon, uh, this uh, Eli Elijah Daniel, uh, former mayor of Hell, Michigan, was impeached after issuing a proclamation declaring homosexual or, sorry, heterosexuality. heterosexuality. Illegal. That's right. The left-wing moonbat tried to outlaw oh, straight my sexuality. Gosh, this is a beautiful story. So I how, this. dude? This how is like gang, This is like gangsta this is capitalism. capitalism. Is what yeah, this is. one on one for sure. How fitting that this was in Hell, Michigan. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> right. You could. So, uh, you couldn't invent if so, if you wrote this script and you submitted it. They were like, come on, dude. Yeah, they'd be like, this is too far. Real, really? Come on. That's <laughs> right, so right. stupid. So the uh, the basis here behind the story is Daniel is a satirist, uh, author of what he considers comedic erotic fiction. Uh, took official office the other day. Uh, now, in Hell, Michigan, there are no elections for mayoral office. They're Wait, an unincorporated so, so is he trolling here? Oh, this is totally a troll. Oh, yeah, this is one. I love this man. Uh, now I'm no elections. moving into love. No elections for mayoral office in the unincorporated town that lies roughly halfway between Jackson, Michigan, and Detroit. Uh, Daniel was able to temporarily assume office by giving town organizers a small fee. Wow. So, so he literally told, bought his office. Right. Daniel told the Huffington Post Jesus. he was looking for a town willing to make him mayor. They'll do it in hell for 100 bucks. So he caught a red eye to Michigan, got sworn in. Almost immediately after his inaug inauguration, Daniel declared via social media that heterosexuality and practicing heterosexuals were banned from hell, Michigan. Uh, obviously a stunt, but man, I'm telling you, you want another two year, another four years of Trump? Because this is how you get another four years of Trump. Keep this crap up. I don't, I don't want a four years of of anyone, let alone Trump. But <laughs> you know what? I want four years of Daniel. <laughs> this story's crazy. And this so, is, so he, you know, he, you, you think about Daniel from the, if, if Daniel was president for four years, wait, so listen, listen to music? this, okay? Listen to this. The entire text of the proclamation would suggest that heterosexuals living in hell would have to pay an $84,000 precautionary appropriation deposit. This makes sense. Offers heterosexual reparative therapy. Demands that all non-conforming heterosexuals wear a scarlet H and cargo shorts to daily mandated hey, straight shaming ceremonies. That scarlet H is a bit problematic because it could mean homosexual. He didn't think that one out. He did not think that one out. Uh, so he really quickly got taken away. Uh, should have been probably should be thrown out of a helicopter. Um, I but, don't think uh, so. Wasn't. I think he needs to be put on stage. He needs to have a show. He needs to. Daniel, Elijah Daniel, if you're listening right now, you need to come on one of my shows. You can come on this show, too. But if he comes on this show, I want to be on that episode. I want to I want a podcast party with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want him oh, on. I want, so, I want to talk to that guy. That's a beautiful human being. Well, right like there. I said, man, here's what I'll say. Okay, well, some people may find this funny, may find it amusing, but I doubt those same people are going to find the second term of Trump's presidency as funny or amusing because the the more that the leftists pull stunts like this kind of stupidity the, to make their point, the more they solidify a second term for Trump, and not only that, but they make it much easier for his Republican replacement to solidify a check mark in the win column in 2020. So please, 
Please keep it up. Main Street America is definitely getting sick of this bullshit, without a doubt. Sick of it. Did we talk right through the the music, and now we're in commercial? We're in commercial now, yeah, absolutely. But we didn't really, we kind of did, kind of didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't even, I talked right through. Well, no, oh, actually, no. you talked right through that. You're, 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 it's a gabber. You're freaking yeah. gabber. Dude, you should do shows or something. You talk so much. We, uh... We're probably going to be coming back here in a second, but you're, uh, we're coming back with you. We're coming back. Oh, are we going to go into the school thing? Yeah, we're at the halfway point. Do you want to bring us back? Yeah. Do you know when? Uh, when I hear the, when once I hear, yeah, right, right. You hear exactly. the music, but I'll wait till I hear, right, right. That's it. So everybody. Who's watching on Facebook? I'm I'm waiting to hear the woo wee you. <laughs> when I hear the woo wee you, the woo wee you. I'm waiting for the woo wee you. I'm, I'm gonna turn this up and you guys can hear what we're hearing. Oh, oh, he's doing the news. Oh, dude, I gotta play this. Yes. Yes. The State Department credited itself for only closing one consulate and two annexes, saying they have chosen to allow the Russian government to maintain some of its annexes to try to keep the situation getting worse. One official was quoted as saying, It is our hope that the Russians will recognize that they were the ones who started the discussion on facility closures, citing the recent U.S. loss of a warehouse in Moscow and a vacation house. Absent in all official U.S. comments were the December 2016 U.S. moves to expel Russian diplomats and see two vacation houses. While Russia couched their closures as retaliation for that, U.S. officials are choosing to ignore December and present Thursday's moves as retaliation for Russia's closures. The comments about hoping for better relations does not appear realistic as the closure of a consulate is a major step forward in escalation of tensions and will almost certainly oblige Russia to take further moves. This tit-for-tat measure shows no sign of ending anytime soon. The best we can hope is that it does not further escalate escalate. When you hear the word lobbyist, you probably think about greedy corporations, but not all lobbyists are the same. Some are fighting for the freedoms you hold dear. Liberty Lobby LLC is doing just that in New Hampshire, working hard to represent you, not some special interest group. You can help by going to libertylobby.info, where your contribution will give us the tools we need to ensure that your voice is heard. Visit libertylobby.info today to find out more. UPI reports the Food and Drug Administration issued an alert this week for a voluntary recall of approximately 500,000 pacemakers that are vulnerable to being hacked. The FDA said Abbott, formerly known as St. Jude's, is recalling the devices to reduce the risk of patient harm to potential exploitation of cybersecurity vulnerabilities. The models of pacemaker and cardiac resynchronization therapy pacemaker devices affected by the recall include the Accent Anthem, Accent MRI, Accent ST, as and the allure. Patients who use any of the pacemakers on the list are advised to consult their physician for information on getting firmware updates in the device, which is supposed to secure them against the hacking vulnerability. The hacking of medical devices like pacemakers is a growing concern for the cybersecurity and medical community. In 2012, the Government Accountability Office advised the FDA to expand its focus on these threats. For over 40 years, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals. Gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, they don't feed the banks, they're Bitcoin preferred, and have removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts Brokerage today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a Texas law restricting a second trimester abortion technique initially due to take effect on Friday was put on hold for two weeks. pending. This is the big one. This is the long break. Oh, the big man. One. I'm like, I keep thinking we were coming back soon. Like, when is this happening? Daryl was like, come on, Daryl. <laughs> When and I had a whole happening? bit that I was going to use, and I forgot. Requested by Planned Parenthood and other uh, so some of the things that we skipped here over this uh, long break, because we got long-winded in some of this other stuff, uh, return of subprime mortgages, so you're going to get to look forward to that. You know, if you don't, if at first you fail and then fail, fail again, uh, they're, bringing, they're bringing back subprime mortgages. So guess what? You're probably going to get to pay for another bailout. Yay! Isn't that great news? 
I think that's awesome. I, yay. I am all for, I mean, that only, actually is gangsta capitalism. They're, right only they're no longer calling them subprime anymore. Now they switched the name to non-prime. Not to be confused with subprime, which is exactly the same thing. I mean, the rules are the same, but dude, <laughs> it's a different... Right, right. Label it's all totally so it's like, like wimpy. You got all these laws against subprime laws, and it's like <laughs> subprime stuff. <laughs> this is totally not non-prime. that. These are non-prime. Oh, that's completely different. <laughs> yeah, we got to get them people. But you know what? You know what? Ride, ride that pony because if they're going to reintroduce this, then that means we're going to get some some temporary bubblings that that actually could benefit me. I could actually finally sell my house and get a better house. I invested in my house. A bubble burst. I went upside down. I could use another bubble right now. I will shamelessly exploit a bubble. That I went up to my room, saw the heads off all right. my action figures, and ejaculated oh, oh, into oh, their wait. body cavities. <laughs> this was most notably the case with Jeffrey Dahmer, who began to what? <laughs> and placing their heads on spikes shortly uh, and This is the, the weirdest onion. commercial I've this ever heard. <laughs> oh, we missed it. Dang it, we missed it. I'm sorry, folks. Welcome back to the Torchwood Report, featuring the one true Niz and Matt. Hi, I'm Matt, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I am now for net neutrality. That's right, I've changed my mind. Actually, I'm not Matt. I am Paul Gordon. I am your trusty, uh, sometimes rotating third host. Is that what I am? Is that my official? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Official. Um, I'm you're, a f- you're, you're a host, not I'm rotating a, host. I'm an official uh, third rotating <laughs> host. I'm at <laughs> iState.tv, and I'm on with the one true Niz, which, uh, what was that address? It's XXHA. What was the site that you said you're at all the time? Is that the site that you're Penn at Island? for? No. Oh, Penn Island. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Please go there. <laughs> go to <laughs> PennIsland.com. <laughs> right. Please go there. So where are... They sell great pens. Oh, they way. do sell great pens. So I got pens. this one I have in my hand right now. Yeah. I have one Penn right Island. here. It's there's great. PennIsland.com. There's dot <clears throat> .net. There's dot .org. There's dot great TV. thing about this pen that I got from Penn Island, it has this little rubber tip on the top of it. Right. That, that you can use on your touchscreen. That Right. That's extra protection. It's got a receptacle end. And that rubber tip protects it in case of, uh, if there's any ink that, never mind. I'm going to. No, this, actually, it's for touching your uh, touchscreen devices. Oh. Uh, you just got to make sure that the actual pen is retracted or else you'll scratch the ever-living crap out of them. That's very fancy. Yeah. See, it is very only, fancy. It's a very fancy pen. You can only get pens with this. Mr. Big Shot Fancy Pants. Only, you can only have this pen if you're a Big Shot Fancy Pants. Right. That's the only way. Well, how do you have it? How did you, who'd you? Right. Penn Island. Know? Never mind. You, if you go to PennIsland.com, don't, don't go there. Go to iState.tv instead. It's much better. We don't sell pens there, but we're we're here. We're we're actually are are we are we going to we're going to talk about uh, a little thing called the framework for citizenship, the oh, student God. code of conduct. That just sounds frightening. It does. Like right <laughs> off the bat, just sounds scary. I I'm, I want to try to set this up. So. The year was 1933 in Germany. You know what? Yes. (laughs) Let's pretend this is the year because it's more believable than the year is 1933 in Germany. I do not believe in I I don't advocate for uh, government schooling in in any way, shape or form. I don't advocate for your kids going to government schools. I kind of. I just I came to that conclusion. Right, and by government schools you mean public indoctrination gulags. You know, it's I, I mean it's basically what I mean is the Prussian school system is essentially what I mean. I do not advocate for the Prussian school system. The school system which is designed to produce people who are useful to the machine, 
not designed to equip individuals to explore and discover for themselves who and what they are and what they want to do with their lives. That's not the purpose of the Prussian school. But be that as it may, my my feelings about the school system have never been terribly popular, but it really wasn't until my daughter was at about fourth grade that let's just say I crossed over. I crossed over from the land of imagining that there must always be a coercive enterprise state to saying to myself, you know what? I don't know if we need this thing. So she's when you stopped this- advocating for many tyrants. I stopped advocating for mini or full or donut size, any any size tyrants. I didn't. I, I stopped it. So my daughter, she's been going to school for a while, and I, and I also practice to the best of my ability, not perfectly, but I more or less practice peaceful parenting. So it was my daughter's choice whether she was going to go back to school this year or not. It's been her choice for the last couple of years. She keeps choosing to go back. That's it's on her. I don't. I don't feel that taking her out of school by force, demanding that she leaves the school system is. I'm not comfortable with doing that. I feel like it goes against the whole values, if you will, that I'm trying to transfer to her to to her. That you know, she has to stand on her own understanding. She has to make her way in the world. So, she chose to go back. And two days, actually, let's see, she went back Monday. So Tuesday, she comes back with something for daddy to sign. Let's just say that uh, I am well-versed in expletives. I have learned that recently, as recently as this past Tuesday, when she brought this document home called The Framework for Citizenship, The Student Code of Conduct. And I, I think, I, I don't know if we're going to do this in one or two seconds. I don't know how much time we can, I We can run this as long as you as it okay, needs for you great, to, to get through it, man. Okay, so we got I, an hour. <laughs> okay, so I'm, you I'm know? okay. I'm going to actually, I'm going to read this document. I'm going to try to read this as fast as I can because it is a bit boring. But I think it bears reading out and you can, and let's just see, just put yourself in my position and ask yourself at what point did the did the sixth letter of the alphabet come out of your mouth in a way that it led a word a very i'm gonna say a visceral word came out of your mouth the un i'm gonna say unnamed school district i'm not gonna name the school district the unnamed school district in partnership with the family and the community strives to promote good citizens and community minded minded students the student code of conduct is a document to assist in that endeavor our framework for citizenship seeks to build a safe caring and respectful learning community based upon four components are you ready for the four components there niz Oh, I'm 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 chomping at the bit okay. here. I can't wait. I'm and, on the edge after, of my seat. Okay, and after I get done reading this, I want to let you know at what uh, you let me know at what point the the visceral responding begins. So here here's the the first component: universal values, courage, empathy, friendship, honesty, integrity, kindness, loyalty, patience, patriotism, persistence. Respect of others and self, responsibility, self-discipline, tolerance, trust, work ethic. Here comes the second framework. You ready? Excellence. Internal push and desire to make a positive contribution to the community and society. Yeah. That sounds so awesome. Doesn't that sound great? It's and they sound like These are warm, fuzzy words. And right. now we get to number three. <laughs> Makes you feel good. It, oh, it, it does. It does. Global understanding to develop respect and appreciation for all people and beliefs. Not, not, not all, n- all, no qualifier, all people and beliefs, valuing the various cultures, races, and individual characteristics of our schools community service to become actively involved in activism that improves our community. Those are the four frameworks. So they go on to explain these four guiding principles promote the education of the whole child. 
I'm just going to gloss right over that. Our goal is to support and teach these four components through your child's education. The unnamed area school district. We ask that parents, guardians review the code of conduct, especially the information that speaks to our framework for citizenship. Niz, you better be paying attention to this last part right here because this affects you. Are you ready? I'm ready. All <laughs> members, all members of our community should be aware of those behaviors that are contrary to good student behavior and could lead to consequences as related to the code of conduct. Your signature and your child's signature below indicate that you have been given a copy of the student code of conduct for your review. Hey, I heard the music coming in. So on that the is? other side, we're going to get back to this, uh, this wonderful story of, of being a good citizen and a patriot. And making sure that if somebody's not doing it right, that they suffer consequences. The new fourth edition. Dude, this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. Crazy. Listen, this is as bad. This is as bad as one of the local school districts where I live in Texas decided that they are going. And I shouldn't say one of many school districts in Texas have decided that they are going to have uh, a class that is mandatory for all students that teaches them how to interact with law enforcement oh, and how to act and be respectful so you towards law live. enforcement. And it's a great, you can fail, you can fail for saying, fuck you, I know my rights. You can fail, fail. Wow. What they if, can hold you back. Could you? Could Is that you, not crazy? What happens if you fail? Do you get shot or do you just get arrested? Well, you got to take the class again. Oh, and and possibly repeat the grade depending oh, on. I wonder if they give people. it in summer school. I wonder if you take this in summer school. They're decent people. They're not right. shooting you. They're not oh, arresting good. you. <laughs> right. What happens if you choose not to take the class again? You what can't. Happens? It's mandatory. What, what do you say? I ain't taking it. What happens? Here's what I said. Here's what I said to to my to, to my wife. I said, you know, they're all I can say is they're lucky that my son is in preschool right now, and not enrolled in one of these school districts, because they have uh, they've never dealt with the likes of me, and they've probably never engaged with a person of the likes of me. It would not be good. Are you a gangster communist? I mean, a, I am a, a gangster, gangster capitalist. capitalist. Right. Oh, the lyrical gangster capitalist. Yeah, I can't rap, <laughs> right, so right. I can't. I can't. I can't <laughs> spit. I can't spit. <laughs> I'm not down with the spitting. So, oh, God. Um, so I think I when we get back, I'm going to talk about the the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to talk about the, the, the history of the Pledge of Allegiance a little bit, where it came from, how it's... Uh, well, I have some stuff I want to say already to you about this. Before we on, on the other side of the break. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, I've good. got some Let's stuff I'd like to. Okay, good. There's 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 something I'd like to address here about all of this. And if anybody in our studio audience has anything that they want to add to this, well, let's see. Our last comment was from Craig. Craig. Craig's a boss, by the way. By the way, if you don't know Craig, Craig makes the best music. Actually, I need to use some of your music, Craig, for some of my shows. He he writes some. He writes the beats. He writes the hard beats. And Craig did refer to me as a rotisserie host, which eh, makes me feel kind of dirty. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we have nine hundred and six uh, views so far. So, and that's on the uh, Liberty Principle page. I don't know about what's going on on the other stuff, but. And I don't know how many how many views we don't we don't have a way of tracking what how many people are listening to us on the fine LRNs, do we? We don't know. We need to get we those don't numbers. We don't know. We need to get those numbers. We need to know what they are. I can't believe we missed the onion commercial though. That kind of bums me out. 
That was a. It sounded like it was a funny one. Craig is laughing. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Craig. I'm here for your entertainment, Craig. By the way, I wasn't going to do this show, Craig. I was going to say, Niz, I don't feel like it. And then I was like, Craig needs <laughs> entertainment. So <clears throat> I stepped in and said, dude, I got to represent for, for Craig Bo. Craig Bo, by the way, he totally embraces his inner self-centeredness. And I love him for that. So how long is this break? This probably is. We're probably coming back now. Do you want to play us in or you want me to play us in? Yeah, anyway? I got it. Okay, okay. Welcome back. You're listening to the Torchwood Report live on LRN.FM. I am the one true Niz here with Paul Gordon. Before the break, uh, we were talking about... Excuse uh, me. Excuse me. That was inappropriate. I am. I now, didn't use the right pronoun. I am now Paul Gordon. Gordon. I, I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Gordon. Paul Gordon. Uh, so before the break, we were talking about some of this craziness. What, what, what is it called? The uh, oh gosh, the how to no, how, me... how to be a communist? Uh... <laughs> <That's right. laughs> is that what this is? Uh, Dude, this is absolutely. First of all, this this it's... is absolutely crazy. Okay, no, it is. Uh, it's the the here, the student you, you... code of conduct. It's the framework for citizenship. Student code of conduct. <laughs> yes, this is what your your kid brings home. It makes blood you. like well, I blood. Want... Feel like is going to be gushing out of my eyes at any moment here. Uh, moment. When you said, when is the spot where I would stop and start dropping the F-bomb? The part where they talked about activism. Okay. I mean, they used a lot of nice flowery words in the very beginning, talking about, oh, yes, lovely. Uh, we're going to teach you how to, how, to, how to be a good person in the community and, you know, excellence and whatnot and blah, 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 blah. Some nice flowery buzzwords. Activism. And then I'm like, wait, what? What is, did, wait, he just said what? Uh, how about you know you teach I don't know math, science, history, literature, you know, like the stuff you're paid to. You mean the three hours? You're paid to. By the way, you're echoing in my head. I don't know if anybody else can hear him echoing. But you're it's probably echoing because I'm backed away from my mic and yelling. Because this is crook, dude. Honestly. Because this is crazy. It seems like they're Honestly, trying to turn elementary school like into the communist indoctrination gulags that higher education has become. Like what they did in the university setting, in, in, in higher ed, in the university settings, now they're trying to take that framework and move it down into high school, junior high school, elementary school. That that seems to be what, what this what what uh, the end goal of this is. I mean, how, how, why not? Why don't you, as 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 a school, why don't as a public as, school, as, as a school, teach as a public school, the, you know the three R's: math, the reading, writing, reading, writing, arithmetic. Yeah. Right, right. Why, why don't you focus on that and let me, as a parent, handle how to teach my child uh, to interact with the world and with the community in which they live? How, how about that? What, what's wrong with that? Because the school system stopped doing that long ago. Like I said in the very beginning, the school, the 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 design of the school is not to simply equip your child to 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 self discover and to define their lives the way they see fit and to find their way in the world to de determine their version of what success what happiness is no they're going to define success they're going to define happiness and it's going to be wrapped around the, the state in one way shape or form so if you're, well, I, I'm going to go to kind of set this up a little bit more. I want to talk about the history because they use a key word here. This is the word that ultimately I lost it. I was like, I understood the ramifications of this word. Well, actually, there was two things. Uh, the, the first one happened. And then the next word coupled with the, the claim of the first one. And the first one is, this is this is really the first framework, universal values. What the frick? Can I say freak? 
Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Universal values. What the heck? It's like, okay, maybe you believe in the labor theory of value where you can somehow mathematically determine what value is. But uh, for the rest of us mere non statey commies, <laughs> we understand that value is, is subjective. So you're going to make a claim. You make that claim of universal value. As soon as you make that claim, you're pretty much cutting off all debate right there. Right. Let's, let's, let's open this debate up with an absolute. <laughs> right. Yeah. Our universal value. It's just common sense, universal value. You got empathy. You got friendship. You got honesty, integrity, kindness, loyalty, patience. All of those have I, – I could, I could dissect all of those. If we had two or three hours, I could go through each one of those words and tell you why – or at least suggest to you why I find all of those words troubling. But you get to the word patriotism, and you couple that with universal values, and then you go down to the bottom where it says, all members of our community should be aware of those behaviors that are contrary to good student behavior. And could like, lead to like consequences. A, who this, wrote this? Our, our, Is it George Orwell that wrote this? I I don't know. I, I, it, it could be. You, you're, 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 you need a loyalty oath. Do you want my daughter to sign a loyalty oath? Will that make make you feel better? It's signed it's, in blood on right, a so, parchment of dried human skin. So this notion of patriotism being taught in in school, this is, it's it's it hasn't been with America from the start. This fact. doesn't sound even even just from a. Uh, even from a statist perspective, state by state uh, based perspective, this, right? This this does not even this does not sound uh, like something American. This this sounds like something from uh, wanna, you know in, in in Soviet Russia. Yes, and I want to be clear when I I from my perspective when you say American, I'm thinking the American myth because America's maybe it's not exactly what you you thought it was, but even in 1878. I would say that the, at the very least, the myth of America, the idea that America was founded upon individual liberty, that everything was centered around the individual. I really, I use this uh, all the time. You know, the, the United States of America, to a certain degree, had a Christ, Christian ethos, uh, inconsistently followed, to be sure. But part of the Christian ethos comes from Christ. A parable about the sheep. He has 99 sheep. One of his sheep are lost. He puts everything aside to find that one sheep. This is this is the perfect symbol of of individualism. It's it's the individual matters. It's it's about the individual first and foremost. And in 1878, I doubt that if your child came home with this. That it would go very well for the school, most and and in those days, for the most part, you would have known exactly who the teacher was. You would have known exactly who the principal was, and you 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 would know where they lived. You probably you you see them in church, or you know you're you're rubbing elbows with them. You know exactly who they are. They're, you're going to come face to face with them. You're going to hold them accountable, and. This isn't going to fly, even even with all the inconsistencies of what America really was versus what it thought it was. At least in eighteen seventy eight, at the very least, America thought it was something individual liberty. Now, less and less people even hold on to the myth of of individual liberty. There, they have no problem and. And it happened at the turn of the century when right, we're we're embracing we're heavily embracing collectivism. Uh, the music is in, Paul. We're heading into break. We're going to continue this conversation on the other side. Yeah, definitely stick side, around because I promise we have a point. Yeah, on the other side, we're going to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, this, this is kind of scary, man. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. I mean, this is if you understand scary. what all this means. But I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get into this because we don't have a, a whole lot of time. But I mean, I'm going to get into the Pledge of Allegiance next. And maybe after the Pledge of Allegiance, I want to talk about the whole child initiative. And, and really, all of this is the whole child initiative. 
And this document, it just mentions the whole child in passing. These four guiding principles promote the education of the whole child. And it goes on. And it doesn't, doesn't really reveal to you that <laughs> the whole child initiative is something which is, well, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I should talk about it a little bit during the break here, uh, just in case we don't get to it for our Facebook audience. The, the whole child initiative is something that was developed by an organization called, I think it's, uh, let me look it up here, ASCD American, American Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. So this... This organization began in 1943, I believe. I don't have the exact number. I, th I believe that was the year. And it has over 155,000 members. And guess where those members are located? Uh, is this an American organization? No, it's not. I mean, it is. it was founded in America. It's American in the sense that it's American run, but it's not American focused. It has 150,000 members in over 128 countries. And it began the Whole Child Initiative in 2007 and it has partnerships with schools in over 128 countries. Sound a little weird? A little weird. <laughs> it, it doesn't say weird. that in this document. It, one of the reasons that, well, I'll get to it. I didn't sign this document because it, this document didn't really reveal exactly what it is. It, I'm doesn't talk about the whole childhood initiative. It doesn't talk about the ASCD and exactly what is the ASCD and who's the CEO of the ASCD. You'd be interested to learn that. Maybe I'll save that. You guys got to keep watching if you're on the Liberty Principle page because we're going to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. And then after the Pledge of Allegiance, then we'll talk about this, because I think these are the two important points. And the reason I want to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance is this idea of the school transferring patriotism is new, relatively speaking, to American history. It's not something that was done. You got your headphones on. I'm assuming we're about ready to come back. Yeah, we are just about. All right, I'll wait till we come back. <clears throat> Uh, this commercial will end. There'll be a little tease for LRN, and then we'll come back in. Just kidding. But seriously, at the end of the day, you'll want to avoid this scenario sounding like everyone else. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Welcome back. You're listening to the Torchwood Report live on the Liberty Radio Network. I am the one true Niz, uh, continuing our conversation with Cheerful. Paul Gordon. Paul Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Yes, uh, we're talking about some uh, craziness here at school, indoctrination, gulags, and uh, how they're tricking your kids into becoming goose steppers. Uh, yeah. So let's continue and this. You're signing the document that. Right. It's not a, the document doesn't ask you to agree with what the document has to say, but it's it's very. <laughs> they just ask you to acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. They don't ask for your input on it. They're just telling you this right. is what but we're going to do, and we want you to sign this so you know that this is what we're going to do. But it, it it begins saying that this is in partnership with the families and communities. Then this is a full fledged curriculum, which we're going to get to. Well, we'll get to that on. 
uh, probably after this segment. This segment, we're going to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. I just want to talk about the history of the Pledge of Allegiance. And some of you probably already know the history of Pledge of Allegiance. So for those of you that don't, that's what I'm going to talk about. The, the idea of the school transferring patriotism. By the way, patriotism is nationalism. And uh, I, I will say that the, the, the what's behind this doesn't end at nationalism. Nationalism is, is the door that opens a path to global citizenship. It's not about nationalism. But nationalism, patriotism, oh, man, that's going to get a lot of uh, conservative right-leaning folks like, well, yeah, yeah well, I, patriotism, well, that's got to be good. I don't understand. It doesn't stop there. Just like. Originally, the Pledge of Allegiance wasn't intended to stop there. The Pledge of Allegiance was intended to open up a door to change the conversation from the individual to the collective. So, little known, interesting factoid, the, the Pledge of Allegiance began in 1892 when there was this dude, his name was Daniel Sharp Ford. And he happened to own a magazine, and the magazine was called, you tell me this doesn't sound a little weird, The Youth's Companion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, The Youth's Companion. Doesn't sound like Hitler Youth or anything. Now, no, normally I might be all. like, oh, Hitler Youth, Youth. Ah, that's a stress. Yeah. Um, what, the, what, the, what the guy did was he, he, he had flags. I don't know how he did that. But uh, somehow he invinced all these school districts to install flags in every classroom across every country, uh, across across the country, and all the all the little one room school rooms, all of them, installing the flags in 1892 to help quote unquote spread American patriotism and. In, in an idea, in a, in a way to, 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 to work the flag into people's conscience, uh, he said, hey, dude, you know, we should have, like, people, like, I don't know, recite something to it. He's like, yo, dude, do we got anybody? We got any poetic people? Hey, look, it's a socialist. Let's get that guy. Francis J. Right, Bellamy. They're good at indoctrination. Call him over it's here. Not, it's not indoctrination, dude. It's just a, it's just a plague <laughs> to a pledge to a piece of cloth. And so he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, he did not include uh, 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 Under God. Under God was not part of the original pledge. I think that was added somewhere around the 50s that was added. So so that wasn't part of the equation early on. Uh, and so it's interesting to hear conservatives fighting about, you're going to keep under God. It's interesting that conservatives are like, what do you mean you're not going to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Dude, it was written by socialists. You're <laughs> defending socialist <laughs> propaganda. Right. Good to And, you know, right, and, right. and essentially that's what we're my, doing my here. Medicaid. And that's what they're doing in here using the word like patriotism. They're getting a lot of conservatives. We're like, oh, well, there's nothing to see here. Oh, well, yeah. Like patriotism. patriotism is good. <laughs> they're not even thinking. They're, they're not even reading the word. These words are all just like pie in the sky, feel good, right. magical words. That, that, that patriotism is all great until your kid is at one of these rallies <laughs> holding a hammer and sickle flag. Well, <laughs> well, well, you know, Francis Bellamy writes the flags and he's like, dude, this isn't working. It's like, they look creepy. They're like, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Yeah, and originally wasn't it? It wasn't the hand over the heart. Originally they no, did no, the no, Roman I'll get salute. To that. Don't, 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 don't quash. Don't on spill me. the beans. Don't quash on me, man. So, so he's like, hey, hey, why don't we use? Uh, basically, this is a fascist symbol. <laughs> it's like it's inter it's interesting how fascism and socialism and state socialism. I want to clarify and state communism. How easily they blend into one another. Uh, he created what was called the. Bellamy salute. And guess what the Bellamy salute looks like? If you're watching on, uh, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I plan on running on president some, for president someday. <laughs> and somebody's going to use this. Video It'll be on a loop. He made the Hitler right. thing. It'll be on a loop. Don't, don't do it. No, It'll no, be on a loop somewhere. It. It'll be 10 hours it. of Paul Gordon. Right. You know, inter inter a Highland somebody. Toad and, right, right. Don't do it. So, so it's, it's the Hitler salute. So they had this for a while, and in the 30s, Hitler rises to power, and they start, you know, Hitler. They do the they do the Hitler salute, the Bellamy salute. Now, interestingly, 
the 30s, even though this was going on, you know, Hitler rose to power at 34. They be, even before he rose to power, they were using the Hitler salute at his rallies. But once he takes power, then, or 1933 he took power, sorry. So once he takes power, then they're stepping up. The Hitler salute came, and nobody's thinking immediately, dude, we better stop it. And the reason they're not, which I won't get into too much detail here, but the reason that they're not is because early on, the American progressives looked to Hitler and said, hey, that guy's got it figured out. Now, what they didn't understand, what they, they, they believed in incrementalism. They believed in nonviolently nudging people towards uh, their eugenics, progressive, collectivist, let's make the world a better place. Uh, when Hitler started getting violent, that's when they're like, oh, dude, it's not cool. But interestingly enough, uh, Congress eventually stepped in and, and ended the Hitler salute. And you know what year it ended? 1942. Okay. So that's like December, <laughs> right. you know, 7th, uh, Pearl Harbor. They declare war against Germany. And now they forget, hey, since we're at war. That's when they decide to end the Hitler salute and they move it from the Hitler salute to, to the hand over the cross. Right, so the that's, hand over the heart. All right, the hand over the heart. So that's right. the context here. That's what we're talking about here, folks. We're talking about a fundamental change in American American educational life starting in 1892. And it took them from 1892 to 1942 to finally get rid of the Hitler salute. So in America, from roughly 1892, thereabouts... Your 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 talking, grandparents. Put it this way: depending on your age, your, your grandparents, grandparents stood at the least in a classroom. Heil Hitlering, pointing at a piece of cloth. Heil Hitlering. Heil Hitlering. Right. That's America, folks. That's what has gotten. Now you think about though how powerful the American myth of individual liberty was. <clears throat> how powerful this myth was that we're only now beginning to see the fruits of, of that indoctrination where now people are openly embracing this document that comes home and it claims to know what universal standards are. And part of those universal standards are patriotism. And uh, that's part of your student code of conduct. And if the community sees that you're not participating in the student code of conduct. You being there student, will be consequences. There will be consequences. This is you will be dealt. You will be dealt with. This is what came home to me, and my wife. Is that the music coming in? It is. Yes. All right. So on the other side, we're going to talk about the whole child, the whole child initiative, which is at the root of all of this. And they it's just creepy. mentioned it in passing. It's creepy. Stick around. Super. We will be right back. You Unless you're on Facebook, and then we never went away. I never went away. Yay! Now, that's the uh, weird this, thing this... about the Facebook thing. It's weird, because normally this... <coughs> we rest. Right, right. But there's no rest. Sometimes no, there's we no way we go to the bathroom and no, right. Go make a sandwich. And no, then we have that make... long break. We have yeah, that long break at like nine fifty till ten o'clock. Oh yeah. It's like sandwich time. You can go <laughs> make yourself time. some pizza bites. Yeah. Depending you know, on some the kind tostinos. of relationship you have, you can do other things during that period of time. Right. Go see a movie. Go see a movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, you know, man, I I, uh, I I worked at a television station and uh, as a cameraman. And uh, that was one of the perks of being a cameraman is that, uh, you know, after the after the six o'clock news was over at 630, you had this big space where you were on the clock and being paid, but you were not needed. Uh, so it was very easy for you to just duck out of the building and go and have a couple beers. Sounds sounds inappropriate. Sounds like it sounds like gangster capitalists. Right, right. It totally is. I actually, I worked with a guy, I worked with a guy, he was a reporter there, that every person that he interviewed for a story, he, uh, he'd never ask for their act for their name, 
And then once he got back in and he was doing his editing and getting all his stuff put together for that for that uh, report that was going to be on the on the news that night, he would make up names for people. And uh, the, this is this is actually the reason that he got he got let go uh, from this position is because people were constantly calling in like that's not my I was on the news last night that's not my name <laughs> like he would be he was the the John Ficus guy he would like. You know, he'd come and interview you for, you know, there's a car accident at this intersection and it's in your neighborhood and there's car accidents here frequently. You're walking down the street, he'd do an interview with you. And then you'd see yourself on the news and pff, the Chiron would roll across the bottom of the screen and boom, there it is, John Ficus. And you'd be like, wait a minute, my name's not John Ficus. So you'd call in and complain and then the <laughs> the news director would go to him and be like, dude, what is your deal? Stop doing this. And he just thought it was friggin' hilarious. Dude, it's so awesome. he kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> How long did he last? And he got fired. Oh, okay. Just... <laughs> yeah, uh, he was fired. He lasted a couple months. <laughs> Worth it. Totally. Worth it. <laughs> That's a pretty sweet gig for you to yeah, totally yeah. troll away. It's awesome. That's, that's pretty awesome. It's awesome. That and, like, uh, my friends would go and mess with them. They, they, they used to do this thing. Uh, the weather live from the backyard. Okay, so the, the the weatherman was actually outside, like legitimately outside, standing out in the backyard of the. And they had like a little shed there with like the, the green screen and stuff, so he could do the maps. And uh, my friends would go down at the. It was on this big hill, you know, so you'd they could drive around on the bottom side and be on the bottom of the hill. They'd be down there like shooting bottle rockets, up over the top of the hill into the backyard at him, and the weatherman would be out there free. I gotta come in. You're out here shooting <laughs> fucking bottle rockets at me. Oh. <laughs> the little security guys would be out there running all around trying to see who's shooting. Bo- and, I, of course, I'm the camera. So I'm laughing. I'm in the studio laughing because I, I know I know these people that are down there shooting bottle rockets up into the backyard. Fun. Those are fun times. It was a job I actually kind of miss. Do you? Yeah, it was a fun job. You know, I, fun job. I did camera work. For a while, I did volunteer camera work. Uh, I actually did volunteer camera work. I worked on like more town council meetings. We're coming back after this. Twitter. I like this guy's voice. I do imitations of this voice all the time. Well, welcome back. You're listening to the Torchwood Report live on LRN.FM. Uh, before the break, Paul and I were, well, talking about uh, some of this craziness here that's going on in school districts. Uh, so now, uh, Paul said we're going to get into the the concept of the whole child. The whole child initiative. It's it's just mentioned in passing. It, 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 they, they don't explain it to you. There's a whole kit and caboodle that has to do with the whole child. And really, that's a rabbit well, you hole. You got about that. seven minutes. I got to seven minutes. Okay. Up. So, the whole child initiative. They mentioned in the past these four guiding principles promote the education of the whole child. And uh, as soon as I heard the phrase, I knew, and it turned out to be right, that there was far more beyond the phrase than being a mere descriptor. The phrase I stumbled upon was whole child. It was used in this con. Well, I read that. If you Now, if you'd like to, beyond what I'm going to describe to you here briefly, go to ASCD.org. Just go ahead and play around there and and and, and just, just see, see, see if you right enjoy Right off the bat, level. before you say anything, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of that clip from MSNBC of that crazy lunatic lady saying that your child isn't your child that belongs to the community. This is, is that some of that stuff? Is that like along the lines of that? They, they, it nudges you towards that. It, but they include the family for now. But but I I can't say, believe me, it's coming. I would I would certainly wager uh, uh, Niz's treasured Mitt Romney doll that uh, that would happen. <laughs> uh 
<laughs> right. I, 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 I would wager that's the road they're going down there. They're not quite there yet. You know, they have they have levels of conversation that they're having with you uh, to is. to kind of nudge you in the direction. There, there was the if you're watching on uh, the Facebooks, then you would have seen them at Romney and all. ASCD stands for Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. It was uh, begun about 1943. So if you see your school using some of the phrases that you heard in that document, especially the whole child, you you can I can't say you can be certain, but you can be there's a high degree of certainty that your school is working in partnership with this organization. And what is this organization? This is not it's founded by Americans. It's located in America, but it's not an American focused organization. It's an international organization. Even it touts its its international reach. It has over 155,000 members across the globe with partnerships with schools in over 128 countries, bringing the whole child initiative to the planet since uh, 2017. Our to 2007, sorry. So that's the last 10 years they've been spreading this whole child initiative, which everything I read in that document, that's that's a, that's essentially what the whole child initiative is, but it goes much deeper. Like I said, I only have a limited time here. Go to ASCD.org and, and examine for yourself. But just a couple things to touch here. As of 2015, the organization is run by Deborah DeLise, the former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Elementary and Secondary Education. She was appointed by Barack Hussein Obama, and she served under then Education, Education Secretary Arne Duncan, who was instrumental in getting everyone's favorite COG training program, Common Core, implemented by American government schools. I just want to say as a little side note, it's an important side note. I think it bears revealing that good old Arnie has since moved on as managing partner for the Chicago Cred, which is part of something called the Emerson Collective, named after Ralph Waddle Emerson. They're a lovely bunch of one-worlders advocating for positive rights. By the way, positive rights essentially means... They believe government should be able to force people to give stuff away to other people for free. Or to put it another way, they believe in slavery, but they call it equality instead of a slave instead of slavery. Now commies. here's just right, right, right. Statey commies. We are this is this is this is something from their organization. We're an organization dedicated to removing barriers barriers to opportunities so people can live their full potential, always wrapped around the collective. Established and led by Lauren Powell Jobs. You might want to check who she is. I only have limited time, but believe me, it's worth checking out. We center our work on education, immigration reform, the environment, and other social justice initiatives. We use a wide range of tools and strategies, partnering with entrepreneurs and experts, parents and policymakers, advocates and administrators to develop and execute innovative solutions that will spur change and promote equality. And when they say equality, even on the ASCDC site, they're very careful on the ASCD site. To, they, they practice the dialectic. They'll give you a, a little bit of conflicting information so they don't seem like what they are. So they'll tell you when they mean equality that they're talking about uh, no, no, equality of opportunity, not uh, equal outcome. But but I can assure you that, that no, that they they want equal outcome. Right, just read their language. Just pay right, attention. Just, just read their language. So this is the quote from the motto there for Arnie Duncan's group. In one soul, in your soul, there are resources for the world. There you go. Yeah, you have to be centered around the world. You're a world citizen. Your, your job is to lift all of humanity up across all national borders. When, you know, it's, it's, it's the world citizen. So if, if you'd like to learn more about this, I've done a whole video on this on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash I state. And the, the title of the video is, dang, I don't have my own video. Public Schools to Create Patriotic World Citizens. Look it up. Public Schools to Create Patriotic World Citizens. And what they've essentially done here is they've 
they've given enough to the left to make the left feel. And when I when I'm saying left and right, I'm using the American self-identified groups of left and right. They're really not left and right. That's another story. I, I don't know how many. I'm going to repeat that all the time. I think it bears repeating because often I'm talking to audiences that haven't heard me say it before. Uh, but be that as it may, I'm using those terms for convenience sake alone. We're talking left. We're talking right. Uh, they've given they've given some lefty buzzwords and they've given some righty buzzwords, but they all point to one place, which is the global citizen. Which like is, they've raised the creep factor significantly. <laughs> oh yeah, and which <laughs> significantly, is very very significantly, and they're 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 further entrenching the idea. The universal value that they'll claim universal value exists, and a part of the universal value is 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 actually that the goal of the individual is to serve the collective. So when I, I like talked about you know yeah, I talked about Jesus, like right? Yeah, I like the board. I talked about Jesus with the ninety nine sheep and the one sheep. See, in that parable, it's a little bit. Uh, reverse uh, Jesus uh, he finds the one sheep and he realizes that the one sheep is going to interfere with the happiness of the 99 sheep and the 99 sheep they're, they're more collective they're like they're willing to work as one and that one sheep is like dude I'm an individual yeah in that in their reality, in their global citizen, in their whole child ideology, Jesus kills that sheep. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's, that, that <laughs> sheep's got to go. That's an expensive sheep. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. That's a sheep that goes to the wolves. He right. done. <laughs> right. That's. I, I mean, uh, there, there's so much more that could be said about this. And it's it's, uh, it's 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 quite frightening. I mean, uh, you, you you see these things happening. Uh, in in the public school system, and you wonder what. I mean, you see you see the outcome of the public school system now, and the in, in the caliber of kids that are coming out, uh, and what they believe and what they fall for, and and seeing this and hearing this stuff, it makes you wonder. Five ten years from now, what are these? What are these? I mean, I mean, honestly, they're they're going to be coming out of these public indoctrination gulags as goose stepping lunatics. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're just nudging them. Further and further down the road. But it, it is amazing, though, that it's taken them this long. Don't well, and that's wrong. And, and if you look at if you look at some of the some of the literature and some of the quotes and stuff, I mean, this isn't it's not like uh, it hasn't been uh, revealed that all of this would be incremental. Obviously, it is incremental and this is what's happening. And now they're at the point where it's starting to get ramped up. Ooh, and we're over. That's aren't it. We? Right, that's it. We're uh, music is in. We're headed out. Uh, don't forget to uh, check out Paul Gordon at iState TV. Of course, head over to Facebook and uh, give us a like on the Torchwood Report. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, Jeff N Y Z I O. I don't think I got that in. I don't right. think I got that in. All right, now I'm gonna end the stream here. I thank everybody that joined us. On the Liberty and Principle Facebook page of the Torchwood Report. Everywhere page. that we had uh, shared this. Pages, Thanks, guys, for tuning uh, in and participating. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was good. Here. It's good. Yeah. I think, I think next time I'm going to paste my promotions. So I did them gonna... all in the beginning. Next time <laughs> we're going to have like a batch of promotions in the first half and a batch Ready of rock and promotions roll. in the second half. So, right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now, Paul. I am going to disconnect from TeamSpeak. And I will uh, turn on my Skype here. Okay, so I should be able. You should be able to hear me on Skype now. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let me sign let me on out of the Liberty uh, Principal page here. We'll see you guys next time we see you guys. I don't know when that'll be. You'll see me uh, this Monday. I will be on with uh, Dimitri, uh, also known as Professor Rambo, and we will be on full auto. And we're going to be talking guns. Hardcore guns. A full auto show on Monday night. I don't know what else I have planned for next week. So, well,
We'll see. Do you have any? You have any last last remarks for the uh, Facebook audience here before we? No, leave? just. Uh, <clears throat> oh man, uh, just thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for participating in the chat. And uh, we're going to try to do this uh, more often. I'm going to try to see if we can't set this up so that uh, we do these Facebook lives uh, regularly. Uh, I think it's a nice, uh, nice little addition if you, if you're too lazy to go over to LRN.FM or you don't like the idea of. Uh, of listening to an audio only stream. I think the Facebook Live adds a nice little twist in there for, it has, for that. It has like nice touch. Although it does create a little work in between the, the, the commercials that you didn't have otherwise have. But that was all right. Yeah, but that's okay. It's worth it. Yeah. You know? And plus, uh, sometimes our banter, I mean, tch, dude, let me tell you. Some of the things that we talk about during the breaks, I mean, tch, well, you guys got to, to see it over here. You guys got to see it. Right. Here. That needs to go out over the air. All right. We'll see, we'll, we'll see you when we see you. Peace, love, and. Anarchy.